Hey there, it's Matt Decker with Leverage Wealth Management. I am back with another product review, and unfortunately, we are back to Pacific Life. And the reason that we're back to Pacific Life is because they just came out recently with a new product that is called the Pacific Discovery Accelerator IUL2. So it is the second iteration of the PDX product. And if you had a chance to watch my first review, of the PDX product, great. This is gonna be a continuation of that. If you haven't yet seen that initial product review of the Pacific Discovery Accelerator, I'd encourage you to watch that first. I will go ahead and tag that above this video because I don't wanna go into too much detail on this particular product. I really just wanna point out one thing and that is the outrageous fees on this particular product line. Now, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know a couple things. Number one, I am a huge proponent of indexed universal life insurance. As long as it is properly structured, and by properly structured, I mean minimum death benefit, minimum broker commissions, maximum cash, and maximum income. That's always the first thing that I'm looking at. Product is secondary. Once we get past those things, making sure that you have a properly structured product for maximum cash and income, minimum fees, minimum commission, then we start looking at the fees inside the particular product that you have been shown or that you have purchased. This particular product happens to be by far the most expensive product in the industry. It's not even close. It's so expensive that it's nearly criminal. I don't see how any advisor can recommend Pacific Life with a good conscience if they actually know how this product works. That's the first thing. The second thing is I can't see how any client would ever purchase this product if they knew what they were paying in fees. Now, having said those two things, Pacific Life writes a ton of business and they write a ton of business with this product. So I'm left to believe a couple things either the people selling this product have no idea how expensive it is, or they know how expensive it is, but they're not disclosing it to their clients. And that is the whole basis for this video about Pacific Life. People need to know how expensive this product is, because if you knew how expensive it was, you would never, ever purchase it. I'm going to keep this relatively short again because this is just an updated version of the first PDX product that I've already done a review on. All I really want to focus on for this particular review is what you're actually paying in fees. So all I did is I ran a super preferred male age 45 non-smoker. I did a maximum solve for cash, but I did it two different ways. So this is an option B policy. 710,000. Now, sometimes I will hear people tell me, this is people that sell Pack Life and have no idea what they're talking about, that Pack Life does not let you write their policies as what's known as 100% base insurance. Okay, well, this happens to be a 100% base policy. And real quick, let me just show you that. So I'm gonna scroll down to the input pages just to show you exactly what I'm talking about as it relates to this all base solve, because what that means is this policy is gonna generate maximum commissions for the agent who sold it. So here's the input pages. You can see it's the PDX IUL2. The premium is $30,000. Here's what you need to focus in on because I'm gonna show you another example that has some term blend, okay? So what you notice here is that basic coverage amount, $710,000, total initial coverage, $710,000. There is no mention of an additional term rider in this solve. This is 100% base, 100% base. Now what that means is the broker that sells this policy, and I see this all the time, the broker that sells this policy is going to get more commission than you paid in premium. $33,000 in commission, you only paid $30,000 in premium. So this, this is what I would consider to be criminal, uh, but it happens all the time, so that's why we're talking about it. So let's go back up to the actual fee disclosure. Again, I wanna keep this relatively short, relatively simple because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at these fees and understand that something is drastically wrong. So here is our actual policy charges report. If you have purchased Pack Life insurance or if you are being proposed this Pack Life policy and you have not seen this page, you need to stop what you're doing 
and you need to get this page from whoever you're talking to because this will totally change your outlook on this product, okay? You need to look at this page, policy charges. It is not included automatically in your illustration. You have to ask for it. It can be provided to you and it should be provided to you because it is outrageous. So here's our $30,000 premium. We're paying that premium for 20 years. And the only thing that I want to really show you here is that in this all base policy, you paid a total of $600,000 in premiums for the first 20 years. How much did you pay in total charges? Well, it just so happens that they add that up for us. Total charges right there. Total charges through 20 years are $558,000 in fees. $558,000 in fees. You only paid $600,000 in premium. You almost paid as much in fees as you paid in premium. This is insanity. This is five to eight times more expensive than every single other policy besides one other policy in the industry. Five to eight times more expensive than every other policy that you could look at. And again, this is an all base policy. So not every person selling pack life sells it this way. A lot of them will do what's called a term blend. Okay. And so they will tell you, oh, I'm doing a term blend. So it's making the policy cheaper. Now that's true, but how true is it exactly? Okay. So, so keep that in your mind. This is an all base policy. Not everybody does it this way, but a lot of people do it this way. The reason they do it this way is because this policy is going to generate maximum commission. Okay. This is going to generate maximum commission. How do you know that? You look at the fees and this right here, 558,000 in fees, $600,000 in premium. You know that this policy is cranking out an insane amount of commission way too much. And if you're looking at a policy like this, you should run, not walk. Now I want to show you a 40% base policy. So let's go ahead and look at that. So again, remember when we looked at the, the all base, let's just go back to that real quick. How did we know it was all base right here? Total initial coverage, basic amount. There's no mention of a term writer here. That's how you know it's all base. It can be written that way. It is written that way. And when we go to the 40%, look at this basic coverage amount, $284,000. So this $284,000 is what the commission is based on. So right away, you know that it's going to be less commission than the other policy. And we've got a $426,000 annually renewable term rider. Okay. So this is a better design. If someone was trying to use this policy to generate maximum income, maximum cash, minimum fees, this is how they would design it. This is more of a minimum fee, minimum commission, maximum cash, maximum income design using the exact same product. Everything else is the same. It's the same product. It's the same premium. It's the same death benefit option. The difference is, is right here in this term writer blend. Okay. That's what we're changing. So let's take a look at the fees on, on this policy because it's identical. There's no difference other than the term writer blend. So it should be much, much cheaper, right? I mean, that's, that's what it should tell you. So here is our 40% base pack life policy. So this should be cheaper, right? It should be cheaper. It's a 40% base policy. It has a term writer on there. And if you look at the non-guaranteed coverage charges and the non-guaranteed cost of insurance for the first 10 years, we get 42,000 and 6,000, 42,000 and 6,000. If we go back to our all base policy and we look at those same two charges, non-guaranteed coverage, non-guaranteed cost of insurance, 88,000 and 6,000, 88,000 and 6,000. All right. So let's compare again. I guess I should label these. This is our 100% base. And we know that this is our 40% base. Okay. So this is cheaper 42,000 versus 88,000. It's, it's almost half as expensive, right? 42 versus 88. That is so far, so good. So far, so good. But let's keep going. Let's go down to year 20. And oh my goodness, our total policy charges are now just shy of $600,000. They're higher. 
$592,000 in total fees. We paid $600,000 in premium. We paid $600,000 in premium, $592,000 in fees on our 40% base policy. I thought that it was supposed to be cheaper. Well, it's not cheaper. It's actually more expensive. How in the world, how in the world is that possible? Well, the reason that it's possible is because of this column right here, this administrative and writer charges. Because what this policy is doing is it's actually charging you more in fees the higher your a cash account goes. So in all these years, your cash account in the 40% base policy is actually higher, and so they're charging you more money. They're charging you more money the more money that you have in this policy. So even when you structure this as a 40% base with a term rider and your agent telling you that he's doing the right thing and he's making this policy as cheap as he can possibly make it, he's not making it as cheap as he can make it. Why? because this policy is actually more expensive. It's more expensive than the all base policy. And that my friends is outrageous. And it's the reason that I hate this policy. Now in the interest of full disclosure, the reason that this is getting more expensive is because the index that I'm using in this policy is generating a 7.1% rate of return. And I'm just gonna show that to you real quick. So here it is, it's this one year high cap account generating 7.1%. So this account is what gives you your best values, okay? You get your best values on paper for using this account. But in order to use this account, they charge you 80 basis points or 0.8% every year based on your account value. So they charge you just shy of 1% every single year based on your account value to use this index, which makes it extremely expensive. Now I could take this index off and the policy would be a little bit cheaper. It would still be by far the most expensive policy in the industry by a factor of three to five times. But by adding this index, my values look better and it increases my charges, okay? So that's what's going on here. And when I see this product, most oftentimes I see people using this index because it makes it look best on paper. But what they're not telling you is it makes it exponentially more expensive, which is really gonna hurt your values long-term. Because what happens what happens if this policy does not perform at 7.1% every single year? If we go back to our policy charges page, again, this is the 40% base policy. We go back to our policy charges page and we look at the total charges versus the interest credits. So what happens if we throw in zeros, let's just say years eight through 10. Well, in years eight through 10, your total charges are 18,000, 20,000, and 23,000. So you're talking about three years having policy charges of $60,000, just in three years. $60,000 in charges in three years. What if these credits go away? What if you don't get these outrageously high projected credits? What if you get zeros in those three years? You're eating $60,000 in fees. And that's why this product is dangerous. It's not because it's expensive by itself. It's because it's so expensive that when you start looking at what's known as sequence of returns, your zero years, your 10% years, your 5% years, your 6% years, all the variable returns that you, get, that you get throughout the life of this policy, when you start looking at the sequence of returns and you start throwing in 0% throughout this policy, because these policies will get 0% two to three years out of 10. You're, you're not gonna get a return two to three years out of 10. Well, if you don't get a return two to three years out of 10 and you eat this entire expense, it's too much of an expense to eat that two to three years out of 10. It's outrageous. And that's what makes this policy dangerous. So on this 40% base policy, I wanna show you the projected income and I wanna show you what happens to the projected income if you just put in three zeros. That's it, that's all I wanna do. So you can see here, we're paying $30,000 a year for the first 20 years. This is designed for maximum income. Again, you know that it's minimum fees, it's a 40% base policy. The income here, 104,104 for life, basically. I think I took it to age 95. So 104 for life, and this is assuming 7.1% in every single year. What if we just take that 7.1% for every single year, but three years, years eight, 
9, and 10, and we put in three zeros. What's going to happen to our income? Well, I'm going to show you. So this, again, is our same 40% base policy. There is no difference here. The only difference is in these three years right here, because you can see I took out the credits. Zero credits in years 8, 9, and 10, and yet you still have the fees coming out of the policy. So what happens to our income with just three zeros? Well, we eat all those fees for those three years, and our income goes from $104,000 a year for life all the way down to $85,000 per year to age 95, just by entering in three zeros. Now, what's scary is you're not just going to get three zeros. There's a chance that you get three zeros every 10 years. And if you take the impact of zero years in this policy and you extrapolate that out over the life of this policy, I have virtually no faith that this pack life policy, whether it's the PDX1 or the PDX2, performs as advertised. And why don't I have any faith that it performs as advertised? Because no matter how you run this policy, whether you run it 40% base, whether you run it 100% base, term blend, no term blend, whether you get charged the 80 basis point asset fee or not, the fees are absolutely outrageous compared to the income that you're paying. The fees are outrageous compared to the income or the premium that you're paying. And because of that, I cannot recommend this product. And if you have this product, I would encourage you to get a policy review. If you're being proposed this product and you have not seen a policy charges ledger, number one, you should ask for one. If there's any pushback at all, or if there's any attempt to justify these policy charges, you're working with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing or is just not being intellectually honest with you. There are too many good carriers out there that do nothing close to this in the way of policy charges. And lastly, I would tell you that if you're being proposed a pack life policy, you probably just need to be working with someone else altogether anyway, because there's no reason for anyone to show you a pack life policy, not given the fees that they're charging relative to the rest of the industry. I'd encourage you to go to my website, leveragedwm.com slash IUL review. When you go there, this is what you're gonna see. It pops up with just a real quick quiz. Is a policy review right for you? You click on start quiz, it asks you four or five questions. Do you own a policy? Are you looking for a cash value policy for any of the following? Well, I want maximum tax-free income. What's your monthly budget? And then it says, hey, look, you qualify for a review or you don't. It'll tell you because we only work with certain people. This strategy is not for somebody that's looking to pay $100 a month, okay? This is a strategy for someone who's a high earner who's looking for a place to stack away a decent amount of money. So you can go here, you can watch this real quick video, you sign up for a policy review, you get on my calendar, I've got some testimonials here, you can hear from people that are my clients that have actually worked with me. And then you get a chance to ask any questions that you might wanna have. You can send me a policy that you have or a policy that you've been proposed and I'll do a review for you. I will do a personalized video, upload it to Dropbox, send you a private link, and then give you a chance to watch that as many times as you want, ask any questions that you want, and we can make sure that you get a policy that's gonna be designed the right way for maximum income, maximum cash, minimum fees, minimum commission, and that's going to do exactly what you want it to do, or at least give it the best opportunity, the best chance to perform the way that you need it to perform to accomplish your goals. So again, if you want a policy review, I encourage you to get one, leveragedwm.com slash IUL dash review. I will link that in the description below as well as in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, I'd love for you to do so. Share this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment below. The more you comment, the more you thumbs up, the more you share, the more you subscribe, the more these videos get out to the masses. And this is information that is sorely needed in the financial services industry. Too many people don't know what they have, number one, and too many people buy a product that's designed to help the agent that sold it, not necessarily themselves. I hope that you found this helpful. It's been Matt Decker with Leverage Wealth Management. I look forward to talking with you soon. Take care.